This week, we conclude season two of On the Farm, our Emmy-winning series on stress in agriculture. In this final episode, we meet David and Will Gilmer of Sulligent, Alabama. Their daily dairy operation has been in the family almost too many years to count. But like many dairies across the South and across the country, for that matter, it all came crashing down. Farm has been in the family several generations. I couldn't tell you how many years. We topped out milking on the milking herd around 230 cows. That was what we thought we could sustain, what was the uh, crop land that we had, pasture land you know, uh, cropland that was rented. Of course, you had the 230 uh, milking cows, and then you probably backed up and you had a, had another 100, 130 young stock, you know, coming on for replacements. So, you know, that's, as far as numbers goes, that's, that's about where we were uh, when we maxed out. Five or six years ago, we did not like what the dairy business was becoming. Through no fault of our own, the, the dairy business just changed, and it was going to make it hard for a small operation to thrive. The profit and loss margin just kept getting smaller. Uh, cost kept going up. What you got for the price of the milk did not go up in proportion. There's a lot of challenges that dairy farmers in Mississippi and across the Southeast face. Most of them are economic challenges in terms of either facing lower revenue for the product, for the milk that they produce, but also the cost side is a huge story, especially right now. Uh, the cost of production is just really high. And so we, we've kind of seen some of these things pull together uh, over the past few decades and it's leading to fewer dairies uh, in our state and in our region. If you were going to make anything, you made it off of volume and we could not expand as far as being landlocked uh, any, any more. That's why we say, well, you know, let's try our hand at beef cattle. You want me to get in there? Yeah. We decided to uh, start breeding our cows to beef bulls, Angus, and start raising uh, a beef herd that way. You know, and there's been some growing pains with that. We've, we, <laughs> there's been a learning curve that we've had to uh, kind of develop. There's challenges in transitioning from dairy to beef because even though they're both cows, their nutritional needs are different, what you're trying to do with them is different. And so we have these years and years and years of, of managing cows in a certain way that now we're having to change how we did that. If, if we don't do it right, you know, we'll get in a world of hurt and it'll, it'll lead us into trouble. There are a lot of challenges and, and, and stressful challenges 
from making the swap from dairy to, to beef cattle production. You know, a lot more focus goes into what type of calf will this cow produce? Uh, is it going to gain enough weight? Uh, what are the nutritional requirements to ensure that that calf uh, is able to grow and, and hit a target weight whenever you're going to sell it in the future? You're also looking for a really uniform calf crop. And so if you've got a group of cows, uh, you're looking for them to calve at the same time and for their calves to all kind of look the same and, and be a similar weight. The first bunch that caved in, uh, we didn't supplement their feed or their rat, you know, what, what they were eating good enough. And these mamas being half Osteens, now they, they were pouring the milk out and the calves were taking it and the calves were, were uh, they were booming and going, but uh, the calves pulled too much body condition off of them. And so we were very slow getting them bred back. And ideally, I don't care if it's a dairy cow or a beef cow, you'd like for them to have a calf every, at least every 12 months. So our calving interval got to be about 18 months, and that's just not where we want it. There, there's so many production lags in beef cattle, uh, and any amount of time that you fall behind really pushes back when you're going to earn revenue. And that's, that's a difficult from a lot of perspectives. Uh, in particular, it's diff difficult from a cash flow perspective. Managing cash flow is, is something that I would say is very different from dairy production to beef cattle production. Even what it was, the milk check came every two weeks. Now the check from this beef operation only comes when we sell something and we don't, you know, we may go two or three months without selling anything. So yeah, you gotta learn to kind of budget things a little bit more. Are you thinking about it a lot? Just, hey, we gotta be hitting different numbers. Uh, I think about it every time my wife gets on me about spending some, spending some money. You know, bank account's getting low. You're gonna have to sell some cows. Okay, well, I think about it then for sure. Or when I get a fertilizer bill or something other like that, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you know, I think about it, don't think about it too long, because it's, it's, it's I think it'd be bad for my mental health if I dwelt on it too much. And as far as paying off the note on, uh, you know, what, uh, on our loans, uh, we've got enough animals we could cover the whole thing if we sold them all right now and have a little bit left over. But there I'll be sitting there with the empty pastures, you know, and if you hadn't got something on them, being productive, uh, nature will take over, and just be a mess, so to speak. So, the place to grow up, and you won't be able to find it. I, I think cattle producers, ag producers in general, think longer term than probably your normal person. Uh, I really do think that. I, th I think they think in terms of generations about, I want to make sure that the family farm can survive into the next generation. And so I, I think they carry, uh, carry more stress because of that, because they're not just worried about okay, what, what's the check going to be this month? Or whenever I do sell the calves, what am I going to get from our cal for my calves? There's these longer term stressors that really place a lot of pressure on producers uh, to think about who's going to take over the farm whenever I'm not farming.
I'm not going to live forever, you know. I'm 68. I figure I got five, six, seven more good years in me, but, you know, just Father Time's going to catch up at some point. And so, you know, uh, as we're going right now, I don't really see one person handling what we're trying to do right now. I mean, yeah, you might be able to if you scale down. But if you scale down, I don't know if there's a living in it. So, you know, kind of, kind of worry about that. As we're trying to, you know, navigate the waters of this this whole new uh, enterprise, you know, we, we are going to have to be really smart about how we do things. We have some flexibility that we didn't have with dairy and working with with the beef cows, but it's it's not something we can be cavalier about. Uh, we have to make good business decisions about it, even as we're learning how best to manage those animals. We we'll just have to see how things progress. We're not making quite the same mistakes we did when we started out. We're still not. We're still not uh, real 100%. Uh, the next thing we really need to learn is uh, is a better marketing strategy. But you got to have numbers to do that, and we're trying to build our numbers. I've been conditioned, I guess, on account of the way this business is, you kind of live in the moment. You kind of plan ahead, but uh, you live in the moment, and after that moment's over, you can't look back. You close that chapter, and turn the page. See what's written on it. At the end of 2023, there was one less dairy farm in the state of Alabama. Very important, if you or someone you know is in emotional crisis, call or text 988 anytime for confidential free crisis support. Yeah.